Hi folks, it's Andy and welcome to this week's Kendo Rant. Okay, so here we are for another week of fantastic questions. We're gonna to get to them in just a moment. We've got not got too many today. Should be reasonably swift episode today. We'll get through them quite quickly, like a robot ninja would. It's like that. Speaking of robot ninjas, you can help grow the Kendo population by setting the robot ninjas that work for YouTube to work. All you have to do is like, share, subscribe, write a comment down below using the word Kendall. And when you subscribe, there's a little arrow thing. You click that and click the bell. It says notifications or notify or something like that. That notifies the robot ninjas to go out and find people who are about to start Kendall and it gets them to start Kendall. Now they only know to get people to start Kendall by you writing a comment down below saying Kendall. Okay, so you have to put like, what a great Kendo video. Wow, what a brilliant Kendo video. Love this Kendo video uh, and stuff like that. And that helps the robot ninjas. Okay, and we grow the Kendo population. We've already increased it by 6 million last year. We're aiming for seven this year. We've done more than 1.5 million this year. Pretty sure those numbers are accurate. Um, and I'm pretty sure that's how the process works. Um, I've not been told officially like, but seems pretty obvious to me and um, that's what's going on so make sure you do that but what could be more important than that well i'll tell you right now if you like the content that i put out if you like this channel if you like this video where i answer your questions if you like the feedback videos which i put out yesterday where i take uh, videos that you wonderful channel viewers have sent in give you some feedback hopefully everybody learns but it's the analysis videos where we look at kendall from you know either from japan or whatever and we analyze it and we go over it whether it is the instructional content new video has been released today this is the second video that's been coming out today by the way um of men kaishido how to do men kaishido so all those contents those videos they come at you free i don't charge a penny for them all right you don't have to pay a monthly subscription you don't have to become a channel member. You don't have to pay for subtitles. None of that stuff. All you have to do to support it is shop at kendostar.com. And yes, it is that easy. And you know what's even greater about that? Kendostar is the best Kendo equipment website in the galaxy, universe, Milky Way, multiverse, uh, entire cosmos, future and history of the human race. Now, of course, I'd say that because I own the place, but it's the best. Everyone agrees with us, right? We're the highest rated. We're the most popular. There's pretty much no doubt about that, to be honest. We're the best at what we do. Now, I know there's pretenders popping up left, right and centre. Oh, we're doing this. We're a middleman for them or whatever. Here, 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 whatever. Yeah, but nobody does what we do like we do. All right. OK, there's a reason we make it sort of look easy and it's not easy. We put a lot of hard work. We've got an extensive team, extensive stock of product an original brand, yeah, we're not middlemen that's gonna drop ship you some random stuff from some other country, all right? We're a legit business, yeah? Not operating out of our bedrooms, something like that, all right? Stick with the original. Don't buy twice, shop at Kendall Star, all right? You're gonna shop with us anyway, just don't waste your money elsewhere and then come to us later, buy us in the first place, all right? And you will definitely realize you've made the right decision. Okay, don't forget as well, like we, sh we ship stuff for free. Um, if you like spend over a certain amount, you get the order shipped for free. For most places, we even pay the import taxes. That's something a lot of people don't realize, you know, is that like when you order from abroad, like you get it drop shipped from somewhere. Um, so obviously they can't even check it against your order. <laughs> um, and then try, you know, like uh, it, it, gets, it gets to your place and then you get a bill for like a third of the price or whatever, because it's import taxes. Well, we, we pay that in most cases, all right? So none of that either, yeah? There's a reason we're the best. All right, shop at Kendall Star. Okay, 
Let's get into these questions. Okay, first one, Fisher Sensei, I have a question. Do you have any advice on how to prepare yourself mentally for a competition? Usually, I'm the only foreigner at competitions here in China and competitions are never less than 300 participants and the competition is fierce. Even though I train very hard, I feel like I'm never well prepared mentally and physically. Um, it's tough, right? And I know it's hard to go to a big tournament like that. Look, I used to live in Japan, right? <laughs> uh, lived there for a long time. And yeah, I've got a lot of experience going tournaments like that it's hard especially when you're the only foreigner there and you stick out like you know um and i imagine that is tough in, in china it's super hard in japan though lots of people really do want to see if you even know what kendo is um you know the best thing i could say is what you have to do is you have to try to look at it like realistically what's the worst that can happen all right What's the worst that can happen, right? The worst that can happen is you lose in the first round. Okay, well, then you do better next time, all right? You don't, you know, nothing, no, there's no serious ramifications of that happening, all right? So first off, you can take a bit of the pressure off yourself and then just go and concentrate on each match one at a time. Forget, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter how many competitors are there, does it, right? Because you only have to fight one of them at a time, yeah? <laughs> so just fight each match one at a time and see how you get on yeah um but the you know the number of competitors there doesn't make a difference really i mean it does in the way that you'd have to fight more matches to win but let's let's get through winning you know if you can win more than sort of three or four matches in a day then you can start worrying about how big the competition is right um and then go from there yeah but um other than that it's just experience just keep doing it Cool though. I didn't realize uh, competitions in China are so big. I have to go and try that. Sounds good. Maybe not join, just watch. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Uh, so I was hanging up all our gear after practice this week uh, to dry, and I noticed the inside of my wife's men is painted grey. I normally thought this was painted red. Uh, is this, or has this been a thing? If so, what are the benefits? Okay, so yeah, there's. Um, it's possible to get the inside of the men gunner grey. Uh, a couple of brands do that as like a sort of thing. Um, there's no benefits to it. I've tried both. I've tried both um, extensively. We can get the grey mangani if you want them uh, on custom orders. We we easy, we can easily get it. It's not a problem at all. Um, we don't use it as standard um, because there's a reason that the mangani is painted red on the inside, um, and it is um, to maintain the traditions of the samurai, which obviously kendo is about preserving such traditions. So I don't like the idea of binning that off. Um, as a brand, didn't sit well with me when I first started to set out to design the Kendall style burger. So that's why we don't uh, generally use them. Um, though we can, we're perfectly capable of doing it. There's no difference. There's no difference. Like if if you're doing Kendall, you're noticing the colour of your men, the inside of your mengane, then you need to concentrate a bit more on your practice. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it, it doesn't make a difference. There's, there's all sorts of nonsense going out, like, uh, oh, you can see through it better and stuff like that. It's rubbish. It's rubbish. You don't notice the difference. You don't notice the difference. So, yeah. Um, anything like that, I'm not being funny. Look, I've been in this business a long time. There's a lot of, there's a lot of sales talk, all right? And there's a lot of uh, stuff, um, especially around stuff like men, men gane. You know, the one I saw recently was like, oh, there's a different... Like, what was it I saw? Something about the the bars and the men gun. Something like a, oh, ex, like super view men gun. Something, I can't remember what it was called. It was some nonsense like, look, there are, there is a difference. There is a difference that uh, applies to the burger depending on the men gun, but it's mainly related to weight and balance um, rather than how well you can see out of it. You will not notice the difference. You will not notice the difference. No way, no way. Okay, next one, right, we're rapid, we're cranky, we're flying through these, aren't we? We're rapid, rapid, rapid. Okay, right. Hi, sen hey Sensei, I hope all is well. Kata number seven question again. Okay, we had this, was it last week? Uh, I rewatched your Zero to Stand on video and it helped a lot, good. Uh, when I worked on the Kata later with my Sensei, he was taught slightly different. Uh, where on your video it's two steps, then turning and going down to your knee simultaneously, he was taught three steps and down on the knee facing away from your opponent. Then, when your opponent looks at you, that's when you pivot on your knee and stand to finish the kata. I watched a couple of videos and showed your, it showed the way uh, you're doing it. And my sensei has his old ZKN 
maybe Zelenka, uh, cut a VHS that shows it the way he learned. I was just wondering about this discrepancy, if it's just an older way or what. Thank you so much for your time. Right, so I'm not entirely sure like if it's an older version or what have you, but I tell you what, let's have a look and we'll definitely, definitely know the answer here. All right, so just bear with me. Okay, so here I've got the, uh, here's the video, all right? This is like, this is a pretty old school video um, and the kata has been changed a bit since then. But as you can see, this is from the Old Japan Kendo Federation, all right? This is from the Old Japan Kendo Federation. Um, is there a date on it? I don't think there's a date on it, but it's, it's a pretty old one and there's a couple of changes, but I believe that the Nanohome number seven is the same. I don't think that's changed. So let's have a watch of it, all right? Let's have a watch of it first. Okay, so should we go through what, what it said? We've got a bit of time in this video. Let's talk about what they say. All right, let's do a little trans as we go translation. I, I know there's an English version of this, but like it skips some of the translation, so it's a bit annoying. Yeah. Especially the, the guy in Japanese is talking pretty fast and he crams a lot of information in at once. So this might take me a couple of goes, all right? So you come together in Aichudan. So then uh, they. Uh, let me hear it again. Uh, so they do the ski, and then when they return to Chudan, uh, as the Uchitachi steps forward to strike Shomen, as we know, uh, the Shitachi passes and strikes Migido. Okay? Okay. So, uh, the uh, then uh, goes to Wakigamae and then uh, with a large overhead, uh, swing is the wrong word, but it's the word it uses. It doesn't mean swing this way, but bringing the sword overhead. Um, uh, they, I think we said, uh, returns the, turns the body towards the statue. So they turn, uh, turn to the left to be straight on to Uchitachi. So they turn to be straight on to Uchitachi. And then, uh, using Ayumiashi, they return to the, uh, the starting position. Okay, that's what they say. Alright, so they're going to show slow motion, so maybe we can talk about the, the footwork of the aite. And turning the sword, um, they do the ski with a, it says light fumikomi, but it doesn't mean fumikomi is in stamp, it means like a, thrusting the body forward. And aims for the, like a, um, kyobu. <laughs> chest, chest. <laughs> And this is a this is a kiatari. Okay, kiatari. You know taiatari. This is kiatari with the spirit. So uh, let's just skip the translations for a sec. Let's let's watch watch the uchitachi's uh, shitachi, sorry uh, footwork. So let's just turn the sound down a minute whilst we watch the footwork. Okay. So right foot goes out, strikes as he crosses the left over. Then. His right foot comes across and he goes down onto the right knee. But he keeps facing towards. He keeps. What's important is he keeps his eyes on the uchitachi. Yeah, keeps eye contact with the uchitachi. Yeah, it's just because of the dynamic of this. Of course, he's hit door and he's moved here. He's knelt down. So then his hips are facing away slightly. Yeah. 
And then he takes the Zanshin Wakigamae from that position. And then when he looks around and he, as he as he makes the Fudi Kabudi for the returning, it's like Jordan. That's when he turns his hips back towards the uh, Uchitachi. Okay, so let's see. Let's listen to what they say. I know it's not part of your question, but while we're at it, we might as well do it, innit? We've already had this bit. And then uh, by stepping forward on the left and right foot, he strikes for the straight down. And after receiving the door, he's slightly, his posture is slightly forward. そして状態を起こして肩を大きく振りかぶりながら、ちらちと接。そして状態を起こして肩を大きく振りかぶりながら、ちらちと接。突きを支えたとき、交差したものうちの高さは、おおむね肩の高さです。so as they uh, do the ski, the the height of the sword is around the. Uh, the the crossing monuchi is about the shoulder height, about. Ah, oomune kata no takasa desu. Uchidachi ga hidari migi to fumidashite utte kuru tokoro. And the Shitachi, as, as we said a minute ago, uh, as the Uchitachi steps forward on the left and right and brings the sword straight down, um, the Shitachi strikes uh, the door but retains the eye contact. Uh, and uh, after striking the sword, um, when they put the uh, right knee down, so the, uh, the right arm and sword is basically parallel. Uh, with the floor. And then finish with the Zanshin in Wakigamai. Okay, so we're not going to go into the, we're not going to go into the, uh, the uh, mistakes and stuff. It's not a lesson on Kata 7. I just wanted to finish up the, the bits on it. Um, but I think that answers the question. All right, so that's, I think that's the correct footwork for Kata number 7. All right, um, what it used to be like, I don't know, but that is how the current video on the Zenkennen YouTube is. Uh, and, and they only uploaded that um, in 2022, but it's not a new video. It's an old video. It's a remaster of the original VHS. So it's, it is a super old video. Um, but I don't think that part of it has changed since they put it up. Okay, so I hope that helps. I hope that helps. Okay, next one. Uh, Sensei, thank you for the men kaishido video. Is it possible? Um, is it possible to do to score ippon? Ippon with two p's, by the way. It's not ippon. It's ippon. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, with door passing your opponent on their migi side, on the right side, right. So I believe I've seen some video of Ego Sensei doing just that. I just can't say that I've seen anyone else do it in a tournament. Okay, I've, have I got the video for you? Okay, so this is a this is a video from from a video I posted. I shared it on our blog the other day. Um, it's like a, like the best doi bonds of last year. Uh, this is from the seventy first All Japan Student Championships, and uh, we have uh, facing the camera here uh, Fujishima uh, Ken Kun. He's a uh, Ken Senshi. I've known him since he was by. He's uh he's from my daughter's dojo. Um and anyway, um he's he's a good example of he his he did this Ippon and it, it did it created a little bit of a 
bit of talk. I think we had a question on the show about it a couple of weeks ago too. So uh, let's have a watch and we'll see if it, it answers your question a bit. <laughs> This way, right? Okay. So instead of the sort of standard, as we know, Kaishido, as I showed in the video, bam, bam, and then passing to your opponent's left, this one is hitting and remaining on the right. Now, as you can see, this can be the valid Ippon. All right. It can be the valid Ippon. All right. Watch it one more time. But what's extremely difficult about this, and now look, Ken's a really good player. He has been since he was a boy. Um, but he has made this strike at a fantastic opportunity and with brilliant Kikentai no Ichi. Okay? Brilliant Kikentai no Ichi. This is much harder to manifest in a world of this type. All right, It takes a much higher skill level. All right? Which, uh, which, which Ken has. <laughs> he's, he's very good. Um, so... Uh, so yeah, it's it's perfectly possible, uh, as demonstrated. Uh, but it's it's not easy. Okay, it's not easy. All right. So there you go. Uh, I wouldn't expect to just go and start popping off your bonds with that. If I'm if, if I'm honest with you, even if you did that, you know, often like it's it's not common uh, type of ipon for shimpan to recognize either. So yeah. Hello, Fish Sensei. I recently had a training session where each time I tried to attack, I had a shinai placed firmly on my mune and stopped. Uh, so about the center, I understand it sounds simple, but is it in? But is in fact uh, deceptively hard to figure out. What sort of things can I begin to think about and take into consideration in regards to take regards to taking the center, so that I don't get the shinai tip for my troubles? Well, it's a bit difficult. It depends on the type of keiko that you were engaging with and who your partner was. If your partner was a teacher. Yeah, or a senior to you, probably it's they're trying to communicate to you that the time you're hitting is kind of random or without real uh, opportunity. Um, I mean, that's technically the case anyway, right? Even if it's like Gokaku Geiko with somebody who's like a similar level to you, right? So, um, but essentially what you have to do is you have to, I mean, obviously the basic te teachings we get taught is that you push them off the center with your shinai. That doesn't work in practice. You have to get them to remove the shinai from the center line, right? That's what you have to do. So whether that's get them to attack or to defend, but you have to get them to move their shinai if you want to have the chance to hit, all right? Now, if you have the effective semi, if you make them realize you're a credible threat to them, then that's likely to happen. Either they'll try and hit you or they'll try and defend themselves, all right? That's, that's the simple way of getting around it. Now, it's simple, but not easy, okay? So what it means is you have to gain experience. Don't expect it to happen quickly, all right? Because you have to develop over time uh, a style of kendo that, it's not a style of kendo, but a, a kendo ability that communicates to your opponent that you are a credible threat to them and you will strike them. And they should be concerned or worried that you will strike them, so they have to react to you. Um, otherwise, if they're not afraid of you, they will remain as they are. Um, okay? So... It's difficult, but it comes with time. It comes with time, all right? So don't worry about it too much, yeah? Um, if it's your sensei doing it, it's that he's not ready, or he or she's not ready for you to strike them yet, all right? Uh, because that's what a sensei is doing. When you strike the sensei, they're letting you strike them, generally, all right? Um, even if they're not letting you, they're letting you, all right? <laughs> I know, it's weird, but trust me, that's how it works, all right? <laughs> Okay, last one, last one. Okay, this has been a good show today. Uh, I've had fun anyway, hope you have. Uh, hello Andy, I've ordered a Sentinel Junior set for my son as his first ball. Great! Uh, could you tell us a bit about the set, the differences to the Vanguard V2 Junior and explain why you designed the set? Uh, we can't wait for it to arrive. Unfortunately, we have to be a bit patient because of the special moon here. Okay. I uh, wish you a nice weekend of Kendall. Yeah, um, so we've got two Junior Borg sets out there at the minute. We've got the, the Vanguard Basic V2, which is a, it's a simple set. It's like our V2 set. It's, it, it's great for kids, um, especially if you're not sure if they're really going to stick with Kendall and you want a sort of budget set. Um, it's protective. Um, it's simple in design. It's easy for them to use, all right? Um, and if they, if they outgrow, it's not the end of the world. Um... The Vanguard Sentinel Junior, though, it basically takes the design of the Sentinel, which I designed it for my own daughter, 
right? I designed it for my uh, younger daughter. She's 14 right now, but I designed it when, I, when she was 12. Um, and uh, as, as her like sort of teenage burger. Um, and she, she really enjoyed using it. And it's great because it's, it's, it's super protective because it's got a very thick padded futon, but the double gunomizashi on the, the men that it make it really shapeable as well. So it meant she could shape it into a nice shape. It's super durable as well. Um, and it has those sort of features. So it looks more like a, it looks more like a, like a, what's the right word? Like a, a, a burger set for someone that's, that's, that's serious about Kendall, should we say? All right. So, um, if you know, it's, it, it's a great set for you for your son's first burger as well don't get me wrong it's not that it's you know it's not for that it's great for that um because it'll last him a very long time um and you know what contrary to a lot what a lot of people worry about with burger is kids burger lasts a lot longer than you expect right um i've changed i mean i changed not changed but i use new bug all the time because i'm using our comp you know like uh our, our sa samples and stuff like that and what have you uh making sure that the the products that we uh put out there are, are, are good enough for sale and stuff like that before i do anything um but like you know kids don't outgrow burger that quickly they really don't. I know they outgrow their clothes quickly, but the stuff, the burger is like their men's size. The men's size does not get big. It does not uh, get bigger rapidly. It does not. And the men stretches with them as they grow as well. Um, so they can use it for a, a, a remarkably long time. Um, there's a limit, of course. Um, but, you know, it, it's something that a lot of people often are concerned about and doesn't need to be as concerned as as, as they might be. Um, so that's that's the thing as well. So I think that he's gonna love his Sentinel Junior. Um, it's a great set. It, it looks it looks awesome, super protective, looks mint. I think he's gonna really like it. So yeah, there we go. And there we go. We're at the end of the show. So thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, we had fun. I had fun. Did you have fun? I did. Uh, we got to watch some videos. Did a little bit of impromptu translation for you. We got some great questions up there. It's all good. Don't forget to set out those robot ninjas. But most importantly, shop at Kendo Star. Have a fantastic weekend. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.